All right, so here we are. I wanted to mention to you that what we are about to do is a scale factor dilation of three, okay? Um, specifically in your assignment, you will not be allowed to do a scale factor of three because this is the one that I'm doing, okay? And so I'm gonna make a triangle up in the corner of my paper, all right? And when you make your triangle, I'll mention, there's a little bit of extra credit for doing an isosceles triangle. And remember that an isosceles triangle, the two lengths of the sides are exactly the same. So what I'm doing <clears throat> is I'm taking my favorite thing, the caveman ruler. It's just a piece of paper that's been folded, so it has a nice edge. And I drew one side of my triangle, and then I'm measuring that side. So I now know how long that side is. It goes from here to there. And if you want to draw an isosceles triangle, then all you have to do is make a side that is exactly that length again. So here we go. This is exactly the same length from here to here as it was from there to there. And that's called an isosceles triangle. Now, this is an isosceles acute triangle because you could see that the third side is not the same. So it is not an equilateral triangle. By the way, I find it very difficult to make an equilateral triangle without a compass. So that's why I don't require it, and that's why I don't offer extra credit for it. If you want to play around with extending this side out further to meet it, you can. But like I said, it's very hard to make it be the correct distance. It's like, it's like uh, you'll see when you try to make it how hard it is to do by hand. So I have made a triangle where this side is congruent to that side. And how do I know? Because I measured it. Now, I didn't measure it with a ruler. I measured it with a piece of paper. And I'm going to want to do that again. Have another isosceles triangle. And I'll be able to prove that it's an isosceles triangle, even though I'm not going to measure the sides. No, here's what we're doing. It's called a dilation. So I'm making a point on my paper and I'm making it up here in the corner, and this is called the point of dilation. Point of dilation. And when you put a point of dilation out, and you have a figure, you imagine that rays are coming through the point, and they're gonna go through this shape. And I'll mention that I do have a separate video, which you can request, which shows you how to do a scale factor of two but you have to request this. I do not post this to everybody. You have to ask for it, where I show you how to do a scale factor of two, which you are allowed to do for this assignment. So if you want this video, you have to send me a request. You have to send me a, a message where you ask for it, all right? So I'm going to show you now, and I'm not going to use a pen anymore. I always wanna make the figure in pen, and I wanna make the point in pen so that I can see them very clearly because I'm gonna draw those rays with a pencil. And I recommend that for you too, because otherwise you get a little bit lost, okay? It's, it's very easy to get confused. Now when I, when I do this, I'm not necessarily measuring anything. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually just trying to draw the ray. And I want this ray to go on for a long time because I don't know exactly how long the side is until I measure it. So I'm gonna draw this ray and it goes out for a very long time, do you see? And then I'm going to put a starting place on my caveman ruler and I'm going to line it up with that point and with the other point right here, this point right here. Do you see? I know how far away the point and one of the points of my triangle are. And now I'm going to measure two more of those distances. So I'm going to start right here on my triangle and I'm going to go to there and I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna move it out, and I'm gonna do this. What am I doing? Well, I had measured from here to here, and now I'm measuring it again, and now I'm measuring it again. And so if this distance is right from here to here, it has been tripled if I go from there to there, okay? So I have three of those distances. Now I'm gonna do this again. And notice how I have this little mark right here. This was helpful at one time, but now that I'm done with it, I'm actually gonna get rid of that mark because I don't want it to distract me when I move on. Now I'm gonna measure a new distance, right? And I'm gonna make a new ray to a new from a new vertex of my triangle and my point of dilation. And again, you have to make it really big, really, really big, because it's gotta be three times bigger than it was originally. 
So now I'm going to measure it. See, I've got my starting point up here, and I've got my finishing point right there. And there it is. Ta-da. And now I'm going to go out like this. I'm going to measure that. And I'm going to measure that. And I now have three lengths. One from here, and then to here, and then to here. Now do yourself a favor. Put a big fat dot there. That's where your triangle will live, the new triangle, the one that is three times larger than the old one. Now, again, I have this mark on my paper. I have my starting mark, and I have a finishing mark. I'm done with that side, so I'm going to, you know, just cross it out. I don't want that anymore. And now when I measure, in fact, I kinda, I'm kind of, i going to measure this way. I'll make a new starting point. There's my new starting point. Here I am, and I'm going to draw this ray all the way out see look how long it is very long and I'm gonna measure from here to here do you see what I did this distance from here to here is now marked on my paper and if I want to make it three times longer I mark there and then I'm gonna mark there and I don't know why teachers insist on rulers. I really don't. You don't need one. And every video that I watched of people making these, always insisting on using a ruler, it just seems like it's doing too much. I hope you are liking this method, and I'm hoping that you will find that you can do a scale factor of any number that you want as long as you have a piece of paper that's big enough. So I'm cheating today. I'm actually using poster paper to make sure that my paper is big enough, and I'm doing a scale factor of three. Most students will do a scale factor of two because it will fit onto a piece of paper. But I assure you that if you, small with a, you start with a figure that's small enough and you go with a point of dilation that is close enough, you can fit as, as many as like a scale factor of five uh, is usually what I see. But keep in mind, like I said, you want things to be very close together. And if you imagine, like say for instance, there's an inch in between the point of dilation, if this was an inch, well, you would need five inches. And most paper, they're about eight inches wide. So if you get stuck, you might have to use a separate piece of paper. But that is the project, the first half, okay? Making the figure, you have your old triangle, you have your new triangle, and you have a scale factor of three for the whole thing.